این مجموعه نمونه کوچکی از ساعت ها مصاحبه با محمد رضا شاه پهلوی در دهه پنجاه توسط خبرنگاران داخلی و خارجی خبرنگاران خارجی که به نظر میاد نمیتونستن با اعتماد به نفس و قدرت تازه به دست یافته کشورهای صادر کننده نفت به خصوص ایران کنار بیان و اکثرا با لحن تندی که این روزها مشابهش در مصاحبه با سران کشورها دیده نمیشه سوالات خودشون رو با شاه ایران مطرح میکردند But do you understand sometimes the slight dilemma that some Western leaders feel about a very close relationship with your government when there are some in America and in Britain too who feel that your regime is undemocratic? How do you respond to that? Well, I respond to that by saying that your regime are not more democratic than ours because in the name of democracy you make things that we are horrified about it. There is no equality between people. There is more difference of uh, standard of living and wealth between uh, your people than our people. Is that so? Well, just look how many billionaires you have and how many poor people you have. Here, the wealth of the country, at least we are subsidizing five items of food. All the education is free. Throughout the, the university, we are even paying pocket money to the students. Well, let me put it to you that Mr. Callahan doesn't uh, work in an office like yours. How do you respond to that? Mr. Callahan is a prime minister. I'm the king of kings of a country which has 2,500 years of monarchy. But this cannot be also compared to Buckingham Palace. In the old days, you, British, and others who had influence here, You could change the prime ministers as you wished. Are you sorry for that time that you have lost? Do you want the same thing to manipulate our internal affairs? We won't let you. شنیدم بعضی گفتن که تمدن بزرگ همین خاموشی هاست. ما گفتیم تازه 11 سال دیگه میرسیم به دروازه های تمدن بزرگ. یعنی زیر بنای مملکت باید طوری بسازیم که از هر لحاظ قوام و استحکام مملکت برقرار بشه و از لحاظ کشاورزی از لحاظ تکنولوژی از لحاظ صنعت برسیم به پای ممالک پیشرفته دنیا بعد بعد از اون مرحله برسیم به این که تمام فلسفه هفده ماده انقلاب ما بتوانیم پیاده بکنیم یعنی یه ایرانی از روزی که به دنیا میاد تا روزی که از دنیا میره این در واقع بیمه شده باشه در مقابل هر چیزی هیچ اتفاقی نباید او را از یه زندگی شرافتمندانه سالم خوشبختی محروم بکنه بلکه به عکس تمام اقدامات، تمام پیشبینی ها، تمام ابتکارات برای این است که یک فرد ایرانی یک فرد زنده خوشبختی باشه اگر تمام کارهای ما تکمیل شده بود که نمی گفتیم تازه یازده سال دیگه می رسیم به دروازه های تمدن بزرگ یعنی خیلی کار مونده یازده سال کار در این مملکت که نمونهش حالا نه فقط برنامه پنج ساله است که سال دیگه تمام میشه ولی همین بودجه امسال در نظر بگیرید که این بودجه نمایانگر چه فعالیت های عظیمی است در تمام رشته ها این است که این لفظ فکر میکنم که خیلی باید بیشتر باش با احترام فکر کرد احترام آینده، احترام سرنوشت، احترام که همون اندازه که علاقه داریم به بزرگ شدن و خوشبخت شدن بچه های ما به همون اندازه به این موضوع باید ما توجه بکنیم و خودمون برای این کار آماده بکنیم و این تمدن بزرگی که ما میگیم در آینده باید بهش برسیم این کار شبان روزی و فعالیت و زحمت و درسوزی همه را لازم داره و لاب در یه سینی گذاشتن و در طبق اخلاص هر کسی قرار دادن تا یه حدی ممکنه و اون ساختن مملکتی اما تکمیلش با فرد فرد ایرانی است
که اگر توجه داشته باشه میرسیم و زودتر هم میرسیم ولی اگر بخواد خب با لاغبالیگری و مسخره بازی و این قبیل حرفا مسلمن دیرتر به مقصد خواهیم بسید We don't make false promises in the elections, at least. What we say to our people is exactly what we can give them. Your Majesty, in our newspapers now, in our country, there is a great deal of, of uh, comment and there are reports today about our CIA uh, aiding friendly <coughs> nations, giving them money. Does the CIA play any part in this country today? Sure. What? Gathering information. We don't mind. Do they, in, in any case, give this country money? Money for what? Because If we, we don't give you money, you are not going to give us money. We are giving you a lot of money in buying your goods. As you know, I have been across the Gulf, the Gulf that you call Persian and they call Arabian. Why do you call them call it Gulf? You have been to school, haven't you? Yes. What, what was the name that you have read? During your school days. Persian Gulf. All right. That's... <laughs> But they do call it Arabian Gulf. Well, they can do many things. It's true that when we started to defend our interests, the price of commodities also rocketed up by several hundred percent. But uh, this cannot continue. If you increase, we increase. If we increase, you increase. We have got to find some solution for this. But if you just say no, the price of oil must come down because we have decided so, this is not possible. You have built uh, your progress and your affluence at our expense. So you can't say that we increase the price of oil all of a sudden because for uh, 20 and uh, some odd years, maybe 24 years, we have just been terribly exploited. in a very mean way. But weren't you a kind of partner to that exploitation when you signed the oil agreement of 1954, for instance? Well, we had no choice. What else? We were starving. And we had to start doing something to build the country. We had no choice. They dictated to us. They decreased the posted price of oil when all the price of commodities in the world were on the increase. And they were telling us, well, take it or leave it, and we, we had to take it. Now, things have been put right. You and the Americans are, are feeding the world with your wheat, and all of a sudden your wheat that was sold for $60 a few years ago, you sold it to for $245 last year or the year before. So your question, I don't think, is fair. What you're trying to say is, is that we are asking more for our commodities the same way that you are. Yes, exactly. And why? I don't know why the, you think that you are superior. We won't be pushed around. Is it perhaps that the Western countries are just not used to thinking of Iran as a major world power in any terms whatsoever, whether it's dealing about oil or whether it's uh, talking yes, about an army? Yes, maybe you're right. But they will have to cope with uh, this uh, development soon. That our, our country in the next 10 years will be what you are today. In the next 25 years, according to other people, I'm not saying that, will be among the five most prosperous countries of the world. When you become something like that, you start to act accordingly. But may, may I put it this way? Many people watching you tonight, watching you talking to us now, many people in Britain, some of them cold, some of them quite poor, will be asking themselves what it is that you and certainly some of your Arab counterparts, sheikhs and rulers and governments, have against them. Are you, does it in any way serve your interests well, why, to, why, to, why? To, to make a British economy suffer? No, well, why against? First of all, it's not British economy. If you want to say anything, it should be the world economy. And this is not against, we're just defending our chips. Uh, because for such a long time, we have just been, uh, well, exploited, I can say that. And uh, why don't you say that when uh, 
the price of uh, wheat was augmented by 300 percent they had something against us we had to buy it or soya bean or steel products or petrochemical products which in some cases have augmented by 30 times so did you have anything against us when you augmented those prices or what I buy from you even weapons the price that you are charging today is not what you were charging two months ago it's increasing have you something against us and the huge sums of money piling up with the oil producers well it's new to you it's new how could these strange people living it's not our case but living on sand have such money it's maybe a, a little shock at the beginning but you are going to get used to it candidly your majesty is there no element not of uh, not of revenge because that is not a noble impulse but at least some element of satisfaction in seeing the giants of the West in some disarray well no because their disarray is uh, I think needs a restructure of their society the brown-eyed peoples are teaching the blue-eyed peoples something is that well no we really we are not teaching something the blue-eyed people have to wake up wake up to from the complacency to for this torpor in which they put themselves by taking maybe too many sleeping pills there are some of your majesty's critics who say there is a rigorous censorship in iran what would your majesty's opinion be to this again what kind of censorship if there was the daily criticism against our shortages our weaknesses and this and that it's even encouraged if the criticism is uh, directed against the foundation of the state and to weakening of the state and serving the interests of a foreign country obviously we are not going to allow that why should we uh, but freedom of opinion in any country and being able to criticize the existing organizations is a fundamental principle of democracy mm -hmm. and if Iran lays claim to democracy then these principles should be honored yes within the limit of the law but depends what kind of laws you have within the limit of existing laws obviously one of our laws is that communism is not allowed it's banned so you can't do it and political prisoners it happens to be that all of them are Marxists and what does that prove Marxism is outlawed in this country it's illegal it's been said that there are some 20,000 political prisoners in Iran that's not true we have about 3,000 and not more some people have even said that there are between 25,000 and 100,000 political prisoners. You deny this? Do I deny it? First of all, it's our business and not a, any of their business. But the truth and reality is that we have not more than 3,000. You're saying you do what every country does. Sure. If why torture not? is necessary, you torture. Not the torture in the old sense of torturing people, twisting their arms and doing this and that. But there are intelligent way, ways of uh, questioning now. Well, they talk about psychological and physical torture. Physical, I don't believe. I talk not to... anymore. Maybe in the old days, maybe. So the torture, fingernail pulling, people being toasted in wire mesh, which we were reading about in the English papers. English papers. There is one paper, and I find this disgusting, and I don't really appreciate at all a serious organization like you repeating trash that you can see in one paper in one country why do you have even to repeat that it has because it's been very widely reported and the Sunday Times in Canada anyway is not considered to be a trashy paper well that article was trash if you read it from the top to the bottom you categorically deny the allegations in the London Sunday Times well, some of those curves, obviously some of those ridiculous to say about the question of the bottle of raping the woman in front of her husband this is disgusting
Your Majesty, you... Not that I accept the fingernails, the pulling of the fingernails, but the others are really disgusting. I don't like it at all. Well, why do you need a savak at all? Why do you need the secret police? What? Everybody has. Who, has. who hasn't got a secret police? If you tell me one country, one respectable country, but who hasn't got it? Does your majesty think that the Islamic religion is a hindrance to your reform plans? Or has it been in the past? I don't think so. Not Islam. The priests, some of them, yes. But you can say that of all religions. All reformers in the world had to deal with the church, with the clergy. Starting from way back in Europe, before the Renaissance and then, you always had that clash between reform and church. Uh, but here we have not anything organized as the church. There are some isolated priests uh, with whom I had uh, to take some uh, strong measures. Would you, would you mind to say that there is still opposition to you, be it religious opposition, be it communistic opposition? Communistic very much, every day more. And a very, very funny thing developing now is what uh, the, the Marxist organization, which has uh, a, a label of Marx, uh, Islamic Marxists. This is something quite new. Avalan hatta se zar zindaniye siyasi ham dar Iran wujud nadarad. Va dar vaqe in edra ham nimitaban zindaniye siyasi be shomara barad. Zira hami yanha terrorist hastan. Yanha alanan miguyan ke Marxist hastan. Barki az anha miguyan Marxist hay Islami hastan. بنابراین می توانید حس بزنید چگونه افرادی هستند آنها هر کس را که دستشان برسد به قفل می رسانند با مسلسل و نارنجک دستی به خیابان ها می روند و مردم بی گناه را دیرون می کنند آنها حتی از کشتن کودکان خورتال هم با ندارند هر بار مردم عادی راننده های تکسی و رفتگران که از جنایات این افراد به خشم آمدند به تقریب آنها پرداختند و بخشی از همین مردم بیچاره به وسیله سلاح های همین آدم کشان در خون خود قلتیدند Poor people have been cut down to pieces by those terrorists. که شما بخواهید چه نخواهید ما اجازه نخواهیم داد چنین بعضی در کشور ما وجود داشته باشد You've often said that you have never sentenced to death anyone who has attempted to kill you I forgive when it's anything concerns me personally and uh, I can't do it when it concerns the country and the state جمعیت ایران لیاقت ایرانی موقعیت جغرافیایی ایرانی آمادگی ارتش شاهنشاهی آمادگی ملت ایران برای این وضع جدیدی که در تاریخ سه هزار سالش پیدا شده مسلما برای ایران یک رول بین هم هست که ما قادر آماده و لایق اجرای اون رول نجیب بنومالی هستیم We will be very sorry if uh, President Sadat's initiative will not achieve the, the desired results because the alternative is almost dreadful to think of Whatever we can do in that direction, that is to facilitate a just peace based on Resolution 242 and on the recognition of the rights of the Palestinian people, we will do. Your Majesty, one of the greatest questions seems to be that of the right of return of Palestinians who are not living in the West Bank or the Gaza. For example, Palestinians who are in Lebanon. Prime Minister Begin's uh, idea is that they should stay in Lebanon and be absorbed by that country. What do you think of that? That will uh, ruin Lebanon. And do you think they should come back to the West Bank and, and have that as a home? Well, if they wish so. But the question is that how much, how many people can the West Bank absorb? Mm -hmm. If the Israelis do withdraw from the Abu Rudess oil fields in the Sinai, as is suggested, as well as the Gideon Mitla Pass, 
It is said that the Shah of Iran will guarantee that Israel will have oil. Uh, I have heard that question in Vienna, and my reply was that I was not the godfather of Israel. Who, who am I to guarantee that? Uh, first of all, Abu Rodez was not their property. It belonged to the Egyptians. They uh, used that oil as long as they could. Yes, but you... But were... oil will not be denied to Israel. All the oil companies could sell oil to Israel. She will not be short of oil. She will probably have to pay for it. That's all. Do you see any conflict between the social and economic demands of your people? About 50% of them can't read or write yet. And the amount you spend on weapons? No, because we couldn't spend more either on illiteracy or other social things because first of all we wouldn't have the teachers and then for instance uh, over hospitals we wouldn't have the doctors, the trained nurses and it could create inflation too. Can I say that this year we are going to have <coughs> a 40 percent national growth at constant prices which is more than twice, almost three times, the world record which was held by the Japanese. What exactly is the essence of your majesty's dreams for Iran? To regain the greatness of Iran could only be done in uh, the other uh, human aspect of our past, to revive it and to take the best out of the thought of our forefathers and being a prosperous country a happy society based on social justice that is our today's uh, creation and marrying today with the past you seem to be a man who has got just about everything uh, a country with prospects plenty of money oil all the things a country needs and a ruler needs is there anything you're worried about? Have you got any worries? Well, that would be very presumptuous of me by saying that one worry is not to be around before uh, everything has been uh, finished. The succession that I told you that I'm preparing the succession one of the items of the succession is the political maturity of our people. And this, first of all, by becoming literate. The second, uh, getting into political parties, because otherwise it would be almost a, a jungle. I would like my people to register into solid, conscious, responsible political parties representing the spirit of our revolution. امروز ایرانی رو نمیشه خرید. امروز ایرانی رو نمیشه بهش دستور داد که این ور برو اون ور برو بر ضد مملکتت اقدام بکن و این فکر می کنم که یکی از بزرگترین نه فقط افتخارات شماست ولی بزرگترین تضمین کننده آینده است که به هر صورت آینده ایران هر چی که باشد به دست ایرانی و به فکر ایرانی انجام خواهد شد. تا به حال کسی با من در تدوین این هفده ماده انقلاب شریک نبود و هرچی آمده از فرماندهی به پایین صادر شد ولی من که ابدی نیستم و برای تأمین مطمئن آینده مملکت سازمان های ما باید داشته باشیم که سمره انقلاب ایران سمره کارهایی که در این چند سال انجام شده ای را نه فقط تسبیت و نگهداری بکنه بلکه ریشداتر و امیختر انجام بدهد به اندازه کافی گفته نمیشه در ایران 
که چه اتفاقاتی و چه جرایاناتی هر روز هست خیلی به نظر طبیعی عادی میاد امروز میگم فلان کارخانه اونجا ایجاد شده حالا کارخانه مثلا یه میلیارد و نیم دلار سرمایه گذاری شده مثل این که مثلا چهار تا آجیل در یک دکون آجیل فروشی درست شده و عرضه شد یک چیز ایرانی نباید اشتباه بکنه موضوع فساد و دزدی با پول در آوردن از راه کار اگر یک کسی کار کرد زحمت کشید پول در آورد میلیاردر شد به شرطی که مالیاتش به پردازه این باید مورد علاقه هر کسی باشه ولی نه این که ما بی خودی حسادت بکنیم به کسی که از راه صحیح و به اصطلاح جان کندن پول در آورده پس چکار میخوایید بکنن برن یه مملکت دیگه مهاجرت بکنن اونجا تازه از راه فعالیت شدید به جای برسن خوب چرا مملکت خودشون نکنن این کار پس این دو موضوع کاملا از هم جدا بکنید پول در آوردن از راه شرافت و کار و پرداخت مالیات و اون فساد که خب البته دزدی و دقلی و هرزگی است و اون ما نمیبخشیم اون یکی رو اتفاقا باید تشویق بکنیم کما اینکه چند سال پیش من اینه گفتم ادالت بعضی ها گفتن در ایران در این است که چون اون موقع میگفتن امیدی نیست که ایران به جای برسه پس ادالت در بدبختی هم است در بیچارگی هم است در فقر هم است حالا اسمشو نمیارم که اینه گفته مرده من میگم امروز ادالت در ایران در رفاه هم است و وسایلی باید فراهم بکنیم که هر کسی که یه قدر غیرت داشت و یه قدر کار داشت به رفاه حتمی برسه از اون بالاتر هرچی بیشتر گیرش اومد به قول معروف چه بهتر ولی باز هم به همون شرط پرداخت مالیات حقه قانونی Why? I'm, I'm confess I'm curious Why are you willing to sit and answer these questions? Because I like these kind of provocations It gives me the opportunity of uh, cl- clearing, cl- clarifying things that unfortunately are said and not always answered. I am dedicated to my country because this is the most beautiful thing that could happen. What could I take away with me when I go in the grave? Not even uh, a dress, maybe just a piece of white cloth, that's all. So what I've got to take with me in the grave is history.